Cat Noir presents Pushing Up Whoops the Daisies, written by Matt Sanders and Kevin Chilvers. It's Monday morning at Whoops the Daisy Funeral Home. Co owner and service manager Graham is teaching a new starter the importance of professional telephone etiquette. Right then, Brian, I appreciate this is all new to you, but you're doing fine so far, so there's no need to be nervous. Uh, uh, okay, uh, th- thank you. So this time I'm going to pretend to phone you and I want you to answer in the way I just showed you. Oh, but your voice is so much more confident than mine. I always get flustered answering the phone. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Now, remember what I said. I want you to be warm and inviting. Warm and inviting. That's it. Put the customer at ease. OK. Good lad. Right then, I'll pretend to be the phone. Ring, ring. Good morning. You're through to whoops a daisy Let's just take a small pause for a second there, Brian. Is everything all right? Did I did I do something wrong? No. No, you're doing fine. I'm just interested in why you went for that particular voice. Well, I was trying to be enticing. Ah, now I understand. Only when I said warm and inviting, I meant that we were trying to put the customer at ease. Oh, I see. Not trying to sound like a breathy sex worker. Goodness, I didn't mean to. No matter, no matter. Let's try again, only this time... Use your normal voice, got it? I I can do that. Splendid. I'll be the phone. Ring, ring. Good morning. Whoops a daisy fun. You're all home. How can I help? Right. Was that better? Well, I like that you used your own voice. Thank you. As a customer, I felt immediately reassured and put at ease by your manner. Oh, that is good news. Just want to pick you up on your pronunciation of the word funeral. You gave it a delivery style that I'm not completely familiar with. Oh, I am sorry. You see, I've only ever seen the word written down before. I hadn't heard it said out loud until I came here for my interview last week. I see. It, it's just quite important that we get that bit accurate in order to demonstrate a full sense of professionalism to the customer. I will try. I know I can get it right with a bit of practice. All right then, let's have another go. Ring, ring. Good morning. Whoops a daisy fun. Here all home. How can I help? So, just one more time. It's funeral, not funeral. Oh, crumbs. Did I do it again? Yes, you did. I will keep at it. It's just all so new to me. You see, whenever I think of the letters F-U-N, my brain automatically goes to fun, not fun. OK, how about we try this sentence? It helped me way back when I was first starting out. There's nothing fun about a funeral. Oh, that's good. I like that. Why don't you give it a go? Here goes. There's nothing fun about a funeral. 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 That's it. Funeral. 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 Ring, ring. Good morning. Whoops a daisy fun. Here all home. How can I help? You dyslexic by any chance, Brian? No, not at all. In that case, why don't we move you along from front of house for the first few weeks, just until we get your confidence up working in a new setting? It might be a good idea. I will keep practising your sentence, though. There's nothing funky about the fun-loving criminals. There's nothing fun about funerals. Oh, that's right. Tell you what, why don't you start by taking these documents through to the back office and having a read on our policies and procedures? I I can do that. Here you go. Thank you, Mr. Whoops. I promise I won't let you down. I have my fullest confidence in you. Which way is the office? Head down the back there and turn right. Brian has been relegated to a back room. Bless him. A lovely lad, really. Bit of nerves, but that's to be expected on your first day. He'll be fine, though. We all had to start somewhere. Ah! This room's filled with corpses! That's the cold room, Brian. I said turn right, not left. I'll give him a week. Meanwhile, in the chapel, Graham's business partner and co-owner, Peter Daisy, is making some last-minute changes to an upcoming memorial service, following the shock revelation that a staff member has phoned in sick. Now then, Nigel, I know your usual role is part of the housekeeping team, but with Steve suddenly going off, we've all had to make some adjustments. Are you sure you're comfortable running this afternoon's service? Don't you go worrying yourself, sir. I've seen these things done so many times I could run one with my eyes closed. You can count on me. I'm over here, Nigel. That's a coat rack you're talking to. Beg your pardon. My mistake. What time's the service again? Two o'clock. And I believe this party will be rather prompt. Do you think you'll have everything ready by then? You leave it to me, sir. I'm the man for the job and no mistake. Quick question. 
Which one's two o'clock again? It's the one that comes before three. Thought so, sir. Just wanted to check, make sure there's no slip-ups. Splendid. Have you given thought to any speeches? I find it useful to have one about my person, in case the guests become emotional and need us to step in and say a few words about the deceased. As a matter of fact, sir, I printed one off the internet this very morning, just in case. Let's see. Here we go. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the sight of God and these witnesses to join together... That's the speech for a wedding ceremony. Is it, sir? Well, you could have fooled me. Glad you told me now, sir. Save me looking red in the face later. I won't want to upset any guests. Well, it is a memorial service, Nigel. There are bound to be a few tears. Tragic, sir. Want me to prepare a few jokes? Hmm, best not. People tend to take these things quite seriously. OK. How many guests we got coming in? Well, it's a small service this afternoon. Relatively intimate. Family members only, I believe. One guest, then? Well, perhaps not quite that small. I, I think it's somewhere around 30. 30? 30? I thought you said small. 30 isn't really all that many people, Nigel. We've held far larger services here in the past. Uh, are you OK? Just trying to imagine it, sir. I can't. I don't think I've been in a room with 30 people before. Really? It'll be a whole new experience for me. Well, I wouldn't include that in any speech you give. Right, oh, sir. I'll stick with the wedding vows. No, no. I'll get you a different speech shortly that you can keep about your person. Very kind, sir. Thank you. Have you had any thoughts about music? I've got Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini playing right inside my head at this very second, sir. No, I meant for the service. Oh, I see. Beg your pardon. It's just that they haven't requested any specific music, so we're going to need to have our own playlist lined up to last the full hour. Don't fret, sir. If there's one thing I know about, it's music. I've got an idea in mind that I think will perfectly suit the mood. It's not more Timmy Mallet, is it? Uh... No. It's a memorial service, Nigel. What we're after is soft, gentle background music that doesn't draw too much focus away from the proceedings. Something that'll comfort the guests as they go through their morning process. What about jungle? I'm not sure that would be appropriate. Trance? No. How about banging techno? I don't think so. Reggae? Look, I appreciate your enthusiasm, Nigel, I really do, but this is a memorial service after all, so I was thinking something more along the lines of... Death metal. Actually, I was going to suggest classical music. Oh, you mean like Shaggy? Who? Mr Bombastic himself, sir. It wasn't me. What wasn't? No, that's what he says, sir. Right before listing all the places his girlfriend's caught him cheating on her in. It wasn't me. That doesn't sound especially classical. Oh, stone me. You want something even older than Shaggy? How about Wigfield? Who? You know. da 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 Be my baby. Again, I'm not sure it would fit the mood for a memorial service. What do you want, then? Well, you know, classical. Mozart, Chopin, Tchaikovsky. I've never heard of them. Boy bands, are they? What? Look, this is getting us nowhere. Perhaps we should just abandon the idea of pre-recorded music and utilise the piano here in the chapel. I understand you play. Ever since I was a kid, sir. Excellent. Why don't you try it out and see if we can get a flavour of the sort of sound needed for the service? Can do so. Leave it to me. Playing musical instruments is my life. Well, that and corpses. Funerals? Yes, funerals. Now then. Oh, it's electric. Let me get it switched on. Oops, pardon me, sir. Slip of the fingers. Uh, at least it works, though. Indeed. Now, what I'm really keen to convey is that we're accompanying an emotional time for a group of people in mourning. I see, sir. So I'm thinking soft, respectful, sombre but not too sombre. We want our guests to feel at ease and somewhat hopeful about their own lives whilst they reflect on the passing of the deceased. I understand perfectly. We want music to play calmly and continuously in the background so there are no awkward silences for our guests. OK, I think I know exactly what you're going for. We're going for a sense of peace, serenity and tranquility. Got it. Soft, respectful, peaceful, hopeful, calm, tranquil. Precisely. How about this? Actually, that's not completely what I was hoping for. I was thinking something a little more melancholic, gentle, mournful, but still remembering that all-essential element of hope. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I think I misread you. Uh, what about this one? To be honest, Nigel, I'm not really hearing all that much different. Shame. Perhaps if we slowed things down a little, maybe take the emphasis away from jolly. Remember that people are likely to be upset. Can do, sir. Nullify the jolly. How about we try this number? Uh, isn't that the same breezy tune as before, only slowed down a bit? Ah, uh, seems I can't fool you, sir. 
It's just hard to adapt, that's all. Old-fashioned pub classics is my pianoforte. That and honky-tonk. We'll have no honky-tonk in here, not during a memorial service. It simply wouldn't be appropriate unless specifically requested by the family of the deceased. Uh, back to the old pub classics, then. Do you know my old man's a dustman? You're not playing my old man's a dustman, Nigel. It simply wouldn't do. Yeah, good point. We won't want to upset anyone carrying the coffin by drawing distinct comparisons between them and a binman, would we, sir? Well, there won't be any coffin today. Not for this service. Why not? You haven't lost another one, have you? What? No, it's a memorial service. Coffins are only present at funerals. Oh, is that the difference? Well, there you go. Nine years this month I've worked here. I didn't know that before. Goes to show, doesn't it? You can learn something new every day in this job. I thought all that kind of information was documented in your induction pack. Don't know. I haven't read it. Right. That reminds me. If I bring it in on Thursday, will you sign it off for me? Um, maybe see Graham about that. Today I want you to focus on getting us ready for this afternoon. Can do, sir. I will give this afternoon's proceedings my near fullest concentration. Splendid. Now you keep practicing with the piano to find an appropriate sound, and I'll go dig out a more suitable speech for you than wedding vows. You're too kind, sir. Thank you. Right then. Mournful, melancholic, peaceful, respectful... This is ridiculous. I can't do justice to female music on a piano. Where's my ukulele? It's 11.19am. Co-owner and business manager Peter Daisy is in reception, answering a difficult phone call from a staff member. Right. Well, what kind of mishap? You haven't lost the coffin again, have you? OK, that's a relief. Well, what's gone wrong this time, then? I see. I see. Yes. Yes, I know the graves are deep. Around six feet, usually. Why? You've not fallen in one, have you? No. Oh, you have. Well, where's Colin? He's there with you. Well, can't you ask Colin to help you out? Yes. No. He's fallen in too. Well, is the service still in progress? Yes. Yes, I see. Yes, I imagine the mourners are all upset. No, you can't hit them back. Well, first of all, it sounds like you'd no longer be able to reach them. Hello? Hello? No, I'm not mocking you and Colin for falling into a grave for the sixth time this month. Yes, I understand it is serious. I see. Oh, the family wants to take out a complaint. And is the priest still present? I see. He wants to take out a complaint too. What's that? You've got dirt in your shoe. Grave dirt. No, I don't think it's any different to normal dirt. Yes. Yes. Well, how could it be haunted? Yes. Yes. Yes, I suppose that does make sense. Listen, we don't have time for this. I need you and Colin back here on the double. Ask the priest for a ladder and hand him our usual complaints card. What do you mean you've run out? Hello? Hello? Some days I really do have to wonder. A man has come in from outside and approached the reception desk. Oh, hello. Can I help? You don't have to ring the reception bell. I'm sitting right here. You are out of Dr Pepper. I'm sorry? I said you are out of Dr Pepper. I'm afraid I haven't got the faintest idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about Dr Pepper. You mean the fizzy beverage. I don't actually touch the stuff. Nevertheless, right at this moment, at this exact point in history, you are out of Dr Pepper. The customer is irritated. Do you know where you are? Are you lost? I'm in a place where I'm trying to purchase a can of Dr Pepper. Although I am currently unable to purchase a can of Dr Pepper, because as I have said to you numerous times already, you are out of Dr Pepper. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you fully understand, but we're not a cafe, shop or fast food restaurant. This is Whoops-a-Daisy Funeral Home, one of the finest funeral homes in Britain. I know where I am. Splendid. Was there something else? Every morning at this time, I walk past this place on my way to work, and I stop in your foyer in order to purchase a can of Dr Pepper from your vending machine. Only today, I'm unable to complete my transaction, because when I attempted to purchase a can of Dr Pepper... I was greeted by a notification on the front of your machine informing me you are out of Dr Pepper. I see. Tensions are beginning to mount. So what are you going to do about your distinct lack of Dr Pepper? Look, I'm really not interested. We don't stock the machine ourselves. A person comes in once a fortnight and fills it up with whatever comes through from the suppliers. I'll wait then. Well, it's not going to be until the end of the week. And what 
am I going to do about my first four Dr Pepper until then? I mean, I'm no expert, but I'd suggest going to the petrol station over the road or even the massive supermarket next to it. The customer seems far from satisfied. I am far from satisfied. Look, you can't say that simply because he did. He's just doing a documentary. I'm just doing a documentary. You see? Yes, but I am unsatisfied with your lack of of coherent resolution to my Dr Pepper shortage. Well, to be honest, I'm afraid I can't help. Although I do sympathise with your loss, vending machine drinks aren't the main focus of our business here. Like I said, though, you could try one of the shops across the road. Conflict seems to be on the horizon. Perhaps a fight will break out. No, no, there's no need for conflict. I'm simply stating the facts as they are. Fine. In that case, I... I am leaving. Conflict averted. The customer has decided to leave. Well, I do wish you a good day. I'm sorry again that we couldn't help. Feel free to try us toward the end of the week, though. The vending machine should be restocked by then. Oh, I won't be coming back here for my Dr Pepper anymore. You wouldn't catch me dead in this place. Actually, there's a reasonable chance we would. I will take my need to consume Dr Pepper elsewhere. Goodbye. Wounded and angry, the customer is gone. Another failed transaction, another letdown for whoops a daisy funeral home. No, no, not a letdown. He was only here for the vending machine. It wasn't a failure. I I say, where where are you going? Look, look, come back. Come back here. It's 1pm. In the cold room, Graham is teaching Brian how to process a new arrival. Now then, this one's just come in. So what we're going to do is unzip the bag, lift the body out and place it over here. Make sense so far? I I think so, yes. You're going to be all right here, Brian. You've gone a little pale. It's just a lot to take in on my first day. I'm okay, though. Wish I could tell you there's an easy way to process all of this, but truth is, each of us in this game come to terms with the profession in our own private ways. I expect you're wondering why I went for a job like this. I've never seen a dead body before, and I didn't even know how to pronounce fun funeral until today. Funeral. Oh, dear. Now... I'm not here to judge the motivations of any new applicant coming into post. I am wondering why we hired you, though. I quite understand. Now then, I'm going to undo the zip. We start by grasping the end of the bag firmly and pulling the zip gently open like this. (gasps) Ah, zombie! Calm down, Brian. He obviously isn't a zombie. Because zombies do not exist. Say there, you okay? Cool! Thanks, Governor. You saved my life! Seems slightly ironic given the circumstances. Why aren't you dead? Well, I like that. Somehow it's all my fault. I didn't ask for this to happen, you know. I I don't feel very well. I quite understand, Brian. This is a terrible shock for all of us. You think you're having a bad day? I was only taking a nap. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in a body bag with you two towering over me and staring. Nearly gave me a heart attack. Well, according to your documentation, you already had one. The funeral home appears to have made yet another catastrophic blunder. No, no, no. This is not our fault. There's clearly been a mix-up prior to this man being brought here. Oh, my God. Can that happen? No, of course not, Brian. I assure you, this is a genuinely rare occurrence. You're not likely to see this again in your lifetime. Well, actually, I think this sort of thing happens far more than you'd like to realise. What? In fact, I have it on good authority that this very episode was written following two identical cases to this occurring only weeks apart from each other. Oh, that's dreadful. Can we all please move on from this? It's shocking when you think about it, but the truth is, it really, really, really does happen. Mr. Whoops, I I want to thank you for this opportunity, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm cut out to work here after all. I quite understand, Brian. Feel free to finish up and gather your things. We'll still pay you for the full day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, bye then. What about me? I mean, are you just going to leave me laying here? Are you able to stand? Yeah, I reckon so. Here, let me help you up. Oh. Oh. Ah, that's it. Where are we anyway? Am I close to Chiswick? Yes, about 100 miles away. Cool, Struth. Any chance you can get me a taxi? I'll see what I can do. What on earth's going on in here? What's all the noise about? Peter has entered the cold room. Bit of a mix-up, I'm afraid. Turns out this chap here is still alive. Good God, this happens far more than it should. I say, are you all right? Can I help at all? Nah, that's okay. I'm all right now. I'm standing back up, thank you. Once I get some circulation going on in my system, I'll be... I think I'm having a heart attack. Oh, for crying out loud. 
The corpse has expired a second time. I bet we get the blame for this, and it really isn't fair. Whoops a Daisy Funeral Home is a noble and respectable business. The alpha male asserts his dominance. What do you mean he's the alpha male? Honestly, Graham, he's been like this all day. I have no idea why you allowed him in to make a documentary on us in the first place. Hold on, what do you mean I allowed him in? I thought you did. There's a problem. What do you mean you thought I did? Isn't he with you? No, he's just been hanging around pointing the microphone and showing our business up in a poor light. I haven't even seen a camera. Me neither. I say, you there, who are you? And why isn't your microphone plugged into anything? It looks like I've been rumbled. I'm Dave from Attleborough. Good night. What an absurd fellow. It's the fourth time this year that's happened. Hello, what's that noise? Ah, Nigel's on the piano. The two o'clock service must have started. Come on then, let's move this body and get back to work. Right you are. Hey, Graham. What is it? I like to move it, move it. You like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. We like to move it. You've been listening to Pushing Up Whoops or Daisies. Written, produced, recorded and edited by Matt Sanders and Kevin Chilvers. Promotional material by Laurie Stone. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a like and review. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Cat Noir Podcast. End. End.